Hello. We are here today to talk about superannuations, and we're joined with a special guest, attorney Sean O'Connor, and we're going to get into some of the nitty-gritty and also talk about a LinkedIn group we've started uh, where people can get more information. Um, so let's start out with why foreign retirement funds are a mixed blessing. I mean, there's benefits, but there's also some not-so-great things. Yeah, let me maybe talk about the benefits first. Mm -hmm. You're getting a retirement plan. Isn't Yay. that nice? And then in a lot of places, we have an employer match. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, the employer match is required by law. In Australia, the uh, employer match is a 9.5%. Uh, yeah, nine and a half percent. I believe it goes up to ten percent in twenty twenty one. Okay, so so really, you 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 can put a, aside twenty percent of your income each year uh, in a tax beneficial way in Australia, mm -hmm. um, and this is the superannuation funds in Australia have been around since nineteen ninety seven. So you can re really imagine some of these are really getting up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're at twenty years, and people have been putting twenty percent aside a year. That's pretty awesome. Um, so you have a, a great big retirement fund. Um, but if you are a U.S. person, there is a little bit of a mixed blessing. And Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So while it is clear that it's, it's good to sign up, <laughs> well, not sign up, but take part in these plans, and there's a lot of benefit to be had, and it's a good way to start preparing for your retirement, it's important to know that if you're a U.S. person, that, that's not where it ends. There are tax consequences, and you're going to be taxed on the contributions to these plans. You're going to be taxed on distributions from these plans to the extent that they exceed basis. You're going to have to determine whether they're grantor trusts or employees trusts. Wow. They're, they're, so there's, there's, a, there's, there's a, a lot of work involved. Yeah, and, and it seems like complicated work. It doesn't seem like simple IRS. <laughs> and I guess we, you know, we need simple. to. I guess we need to know well, why did this happen and how did it happen and are there better countries to have a foreign retirement plan? And if you happen to be in that country. Yes. Oh, there certainly are better countries that have a retirement plan. And it really, this was really a failure of the negotiation on, on the part of the Australians when they negotiated this tax treaty. If you look at the UK treaty, the tax treatment of the retirement plans is, is just much, much more uh, preferred to the treatment you'll receive in Australia. Uh, in Australia, they really didn't address these superannuation funds at all, even though they did amend the protocol in 2001 for the tax treaty. And they they should have. There's 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 nothing to stop the United States from taxing these these plans in their entirety right now. And so the, it could have been a situation where Australia said, "Oh wait, you know what? We want to just carve this out because otherwise, uh, where someone is a, a, a U.S. person and an Australian person, the purpose of a superannuation fund is somewhat undermined because of the that now it's getting taxed sort of any which way. Um, what's not taxed? If it's not taxed in Australia, it's certainly taxed in the U.S. Oh, it's certainly taxed in the U.S., whether or not it, it's taxed in Australia. Right. Um, now, uh, I've heard that there's been some interpretations or, or, or letters or anything like that from um, the ATO addressing this. Have you, have you run into any of that? Have you seen anything like that? Well, there, there are a couple of different interpretations floating around just because the IRS hasn't spoken to how these plans should be treated. <laughs> I mean, they really don't have the time or resources to take every retirement plan from every foreign country and explain how they believe they should be taxed. So that leaves a lot of ambiguity floating around. So there's no IRS guide to how to... How to how to treat your your superannuation fund? There's not a there's not a publication uh, 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 regarding that, is there? There certainly is not. So what we're doing, so what you end up doing most of the time is trying to to compile a whole mixture of laws and getting it to apply to this unique set this unique superannuation that is different, a little bit different than um, anything else. Is there anything else in the world quite like it that you've run across that is? Ex there's things that are similar, and we know that. But is there anything like it with the... Well, th there are lots of countries that have similar plans, just where there's mandatory contributions by the employee, mm -hmm. uh, mandatory match by the employer, and uh, tax-deferred status in, in that particular country. I, no. I'd say that's, that's a very common type of plan. Okay. Now, um, and as you were saying, there's, there are sort of interpretations that people make up. Mm -hmm. Because there's no ambiguity, there's no guide... And the IRS hasn't challenged anything oh, yet. Oh, hey, how do you guys do this? Oh, that's how we'll do it. Yeah, that's yeah. how we'll do it. We'll just make it up. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the common thing that we th see when um, somebody sort of just uh, thinks that they could do a, uh, or they're thinking they're doing returns correctly and they're doing foreign returns correctly. Mm -hmm. They assume they are because they're not being challenged. 
So it's very easy to think you're doing it correctly if you never hear feedback to say, hey, uh, what's this? It's not right. Um, and Sean was mentioning the other day, um, this is really, really interesting, um, that uh, you know, all of our stuff is, tends to go under scrutiny. You know, it's being under audit, so it, we know, you know what, the, what, what is going to fly and what's not going to fly mm -hmm. when, it's, when an actual human eye is looking at it. Now, the difference is that a machine will look at it differently. And Sean was pointing out the other day that um, the IRS doesn't seem to be able to process PFIX correctly, passive forward investment companies and mutual funds correctly, um, that, the, that, that an auditor, an IRS auditor can input it correctly. Mm -hmm. But when we put that same stuff on a tax return, the IRS system doesn't seem quite to get it right and actually ended up giving the client a little bit of a refund. Um, I don't know if we should give that a one on away. Um, <laughs> too late. Um, I, I don't think they'll be able to fix it. I mean, I really don't think they're going to be able to fix it. And, and the, 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 the problem is a lot of people who are filing returns, they are doing them incorrectly because the IRS is accepting them incorrectly. Right. But the second that a human eye with some skill examines it, they're going to say, this is all wrong, and several years of all wrong. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really... Uh, <laughs> I, I foresee a new IRS law with penalties uh, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. about all the errors. <laughs> even, even a human eye isn't enough to solve the problems, because you have people in the IRS who are differently educated and have different amounts of experience. You could talk to two different auditors and, and get two different responses on how something should be handled. They're, they're not operating out of the same playbook entirely. <laughs> that, that, that's also yeah. very true. Although, they do have a playbook. Yeah. They have a playbook, but it's so big... Who has time to actually look at it right. sometimes? Um, one of the big issues that comes up is um, the superannuation funds, it, whether it's not, it's a grantor trust and uh, an employee trust. And, and Sean, I may, if you just take a, a briefly explain the difference between the, the two different types of treatments. So when you're looking at any foreign retirement plan, this is exactly where you start. You need to make the determination as to whether it's a grantor trust or an employee's trust. Typically, if you're contributing money to it uh, under Internal Revenue Code Section um, 679, it would be a grantor trust because all contributions to foreign trusts by U.S. persons trigger this uh, grantor trust situation. But under Code Section 402, Internal Revenue Code 402, uh, we can s determine whether or not it's an employee's trust and... You, you would prefer it to be an employee's trust. Either way, the contributions are going to be taxable. When you have a grantor trust, you have ownership of the direct assets, which means all the reporting that you would otherwise have to do on the investments of the trust, you have to do yourself. So if there's PFIX within the trust and you have a grantor trust, you have to do an 8621 for each of those PFIX and so on and so forth for all the other investments of the trust. So I think that's the first supplies. Wait, we, we said superannuation fund. We didn't say anything about trust. Who said anything about trust? Mm -hmm. And this is just one of the oddities of the tax code that they're going to say, oh, well, that's sort of a trust because it's something that is, is holding something. And so they're for, sort of forcing this sort of U.S. law upon it's the superannuation fund. It's, it's not a trust, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, we're going to treat it like a trust. Now, the test is it's sort of interesting whether or not it's a grantor or an employee, employee trust. We've been through this many times, and it seems quite odd because it goes to contributions. Is that correct? That's right. It comes down to the contributions. When you look into the regulations of Code Section 402, uh, specifically 402B1, you see that the determination as to whether or not it can be characterized as an employee's trust turns on the contributions. And the, the wording is that the employee contributions have to be incidental to the employer contributions, and then they go on to define that further, saying that if at any point the employee contributions exceed the employer contributions, the employee contributions get reclassified as a grantor trust. Well, that's pretty straightforward <laughs> right there, right? Um, well, it's, I think it's a little bit of a crazy test because y when we think of a grantor trust, that's sort of just, hey, I'm going to take this trust and put it in my name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it. I'm going to keep control over it. When I think of grantor trust, I think of a revocable trust. That's sort of what I'm thinking of. Um, and as opposed to an irrevocable trust where, hey, look, it goes in. I don't have control. Yes, I can get rid of the trustee if I think the trustee is doing something wrong, but I give up control. My, in either case, I could be giving 100% of the contributions into it. Um, and so that seems like an odd test, the contribution level, as opposed to the level of control that you have. And that's sort of what we 
think is odd. And so, well, if you think of it as a retirement plan, it almost starts to make sense to look at it this way because if the employer is funding half or more of it and you want to call it an employee's trust, it's related to Are you to, taking the IRS's your, side here? Are you, is that what you're doing? <laughs> is that what you're doing to me right now? You're taking their side? Uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm doing that. <laughs> I mean, we, we, would like, we would like things to be considered employee's trust, and actually this yeah. test is much more convenient. Than right. It actually does work out in many cases where somebody does have control. It actually can be beneficial. Um, when we're looking at their, uh, even a self-managed fund, um, even it, it, if we, we simply look, like, look, you're self-managed, you have control over this, but look at this, Hand, quite nicely, your contributions meet the test, so now we can treat it as an employee trust. And it's still nowhere near as favorably as you treat domestic, like 401k plans. I mean, look at the contributions to those. You typically have employees contributing substantially more than their employers, and those are still going to be qualified plans with a whole slew of tax benefits. The tax benefits to having an employee's trust are really in the reporting and in the deferred taxation on the growth. Hmm. Now, um, what do you think the future is here? I mean, what do you think is going to happen, and uh, what should we be doing going forward? I mean, the future is its really up in the air. It depends on whether the IRS ever takes the opportunity to uh, delineate what they think the treatment should be for these. <laughs> like come up with a policy? That would... And, and eventually they will, especially as these funds continue to grow. Like you say, right. the, the superannuation uh, funds haven't been al around for that long, and they're accumulating a good deal of money, and there are a fair amount of U.S. persons in Australia. So as soon as it becomes beneficial for them and they can uh, reap some revenue, I think they will take a closer look at these superannuation funds and determine how they would like it to be treated and start going after some people. You're, I, I do. I f sort of foresee that now with, right. with, with penalties, of course. Well, because there's, yeah, right, there's an opportunity for penalty. And I think where the IRS will be somewhat compelled to take some action is we are doing a lot of uh, disclosure work on this. Now, a lot of people are doing streamlined disclosures because they had no idea your superannuation fund was going to be subject to all of this and potentially FBAR filing. We won't get into that too much. But uh, for a lot of people, they... they um, uh, a lot of uh, people are coming clean, coming clean uh, mm -hmm. with a with a streamlined program. Those aren't getting that immediate audit. Okay? okay, it's the ones that are going through full OVDP, but that's not the typical fact pattern we see because full OVDP is for those people who were really intentionally trying to hide something, hiding income, hiding assets. That's not not the case. So the revenue agents haven't seen. The human eyes haven't seen the superannuation funds. And just like, just like with PFIX in 2009, yep. human eyes never saw that. So the IRS had to come up with a whole set of rules for treating these because the auditors were looking at it like, guys, what do we do with this? We don't even know what to do. Uh, we need a simplified way to do this because we can't follow the, the difficult accounting work. So what I would say is when some of the streamlined disclosures, you know, some of those are going to be selected for audit. Mm -hmm. Some of them random. I don't think it's going to be all that random. And then revenue agents start looking at this. The revenue agents are going to be the ones saying, hey, look, we need some guidance because we're all over the map on this one. Yep. And we're trying to come up with our best reasoning for this. Um, and that's not to say the IRS can't interpret it differently later. But when, um, and I think when w this is where we, we are, is that when you go through a program, take this treatment, it does offer you a lot of protection from the IRS coming back from years prior to your disclosure. So that's very helpful. They're not, they can't go back to the beginning of time. And we've talked about how the 3520A, uh, missing that, your 3520, um, if you go through a program, they're not going to go back to the end of the time. If you're not in a program, they potentially could mm -hmm. assess you all those taxes all those years too because the statute of limitations um, does not close if you are missing those. But if you do go through a program, it does close. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching. You can join the conversation. We've got a LinkedIn group, U.S. Owners and Advisors of Superannuation Funds. Uh, you can like and comment below. And, and if you're an expert, uh, contact us. We'd love to have you on the show and, uh, and share your story and your strategies as well. You can visit us, irsmedic.com, and email info at irsmedic. Thanks for watching. IRS Medic, the Law Offices of Parent and Parent, LLP. Real tax attorneys for tough tax problems.